Are you ready? Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan, and welcome to Ball in Europe. And we're doing this again? Yes, indeed. The saga, Zalgiris, London Lions, NordVPN, Tom Ackman, all that. We're back again with another update on it. We've already got a playlist on it. Uh, definitely should check that out. But also, if you haven't already, please count a couple of seconds for that thing to go. Subscribe. Okie dokie. We got to tell you what happened already, what's happened now, and what might happen. Okie dokie. Let's get to it. So I am working off notes for the whole of this video. Uh, so last night uh, was shared on Twitter that another filing has been made of Company's House. And it was reported as, well, posted as, implying that absolutely nobody apart from the uh, staff that were left over with de with uh, money is owed to them were getting paid. But that the other creditors, the, so the people who didn't work for the London Lions that were owed money weren't getting paid. That's not entirely certain. And we're going to get into that. But we've got to explain what has happened up to now. So London Lions were in big trouble. We know that. They had obviously made the Euro Cup semi-finals. They'd won lots of trophies in the UK. And then everything kind of fell apart, including the BBL. Uh, but London Lions, their owners, uh, 777 partners, uh, things went bad. So then Zalgiris uh, took on a 100% floating charge on the London Lions ahead of what was assumed to be a potential takeover of them. This essentially made them the primary creditor prior to any takeover happening. And it was, that was when I reported that Zalgiris are taking over the London Lions. We broke the story. It was very funny because we don't break stories. It's kind of the whole thing with us. And uh, even like Ismail Senal, my, my man, goes <laughs> B.I.E. Bob because we don't do stories. Like, he was like, happy that we got a story, but like, yeah, it wasn't the norm for us. So then it turned out that Frank Dolores and uh, Matt Hardy, another wrestling reference, uh, you know, anyway, they, in City AM, did lots of reporting, way better than anything I did, involving the saga, and it turned out that the people who were, like, overseeing the administration process were saying, eh, well, they haven't, actually. So then, of course, it ended up that they were, so there was lots of drama, and it turned out, in the end, that Zalgiris were taking over the London Lions anyway, and that that London Lions will become part of the new Super League basketball in the UK, I'm still not mad about the name, uh, but that's essentially what happened. And uh, so what is going on exactly now? So there was another filing with Companies House, which is basically where you go to go to see the sort of information on British businesses. Uh, it's quite a handy resource, by the way, for journalists. So we have similar things in Ireland. They're really, really good. Uh, they give you some very critical data and you can see, oh, X has done Y. Oh, that's useful. Uh, important company filings, basically. And uh, it looks like the creditors that are there are not going to get paid, or at least not right now, and that's actually really important, the not right now part, aren't going to get paid, but the people who had unpaid wages will. Now, we expected that. Like, in all the videos up to now, I've kind of been hinting at that because of what's known as TUPE. It's a form of employment payment protection, essentially, in the UK. And so the most notable of these was obviously Sam Decker. And you might recall the video by his wife, who's obviously a very successful journalist in her own right, uh, about saying that Sam's going to get paid. And so the two years on his contract will get paid. But obviously Sam is currently not playing basketball for anybody because the salary cap in the UK essentially is blocking him from playing in the league in Britain. And he hasn't been sent out on loan anywhere. So that's sort of up in the air. He has been at at least one Lions game because I saw Josh Bett do a video with him. <laughs> so we know, uh, you know, Sam has been there. Uh, an Irish guy, uh, Sean Flood, happens to be wearing his number. So yeah, there's that. But essentially that document filed with Companies House early this week, essentially confirms a lot of what we expected to happen is what is going to happen. So Girish have, as my beloved Shabangi, who uh, happens to be trained to be a barrister, but also teaches law, uh, you know, because they are comically complicated. It's like com complicated, they aren't comically complicated, they are comically qualified in so many things. Uh, you know, they are comically wonderful as well, by the way. But so they described it as effectively the most efficient takeover she'd seen in quite a while. And that's a serious thing, because basically in terms of what Zalgiris have to do 
is, uh, you know, limited, which is great for Zalgiris, by the way. And of course, you say Zalgiris, it's not just Zalgiris, because it's uh, Tessonet is technically the ones that, brought, that are doing the real work, which is part of the Zalgirio group, but for those of you who don't remember, so the people who own NordVPN, Atlas VPN, uh, Surfshark, I believe as well, uh, anything you've seen a VPN ad for on the internet, in fact, actually, if you're watching this video, and there is an ad during this for Nord or Atlas or Surfshark. Tell me in the comments. I want to know if my mentioning of Nord and Atlas and Surfshark and all these videos is leading to Nord ads coming up in the comments. But they obviously are amongst the primary investors in Zalgiris. And they led this takeover through Zalgirio Group uh, of London Lions. Uh, notice we're saying takeover a lot. I'm not saying purchase uh, because there's a difference. They do own it, but it was a takeover as opposed to a purchase. And uh, they basically ran a very efficient takeover. So efficient that it leads to this. The obvious biggest question for those of us who don't have access to the books, just to be clear, which very much includes me, uh, is the copper box. Uh, the lions still play there, uh, but you would assume, I say, no, I want to say, say assume, but you would say it would be a big surprise if they weren't owed the most of anyone outside of the London Lions employees who are covered under TUPE. Because London Lions were the primary tenant in the copper box. They paid rent, they played there quite a lot. They had, you know, there was rent to be paid, you would imagine. And of course the Lions are still playing there. And so that makes it interesting to see, well, okay, what sort of deal did Zalgiris, the new ownership group essentially of London Lions, strike on the copper box to manage that? Uh, because you would assume the deal they were striking on day one was the ongoing, as in everything from the time they took over forward, not anything from before that, because uh, that would be a different debate, essentially. So the question is, what do we need to do to play tomorrow? And uh, that would have been it. And it's also worth noting, by the way, that the marketing costs around seeking a buyer cost £5,000. That's about 01 of 1% of the total deficiencies here. You may not say it's a lot, but it is worth noticing, given that... A quick look on Company's House, which uh, cost less than that, and you'd have known that London Lions was available for sale. And frankly, you know, it would have been very well known that London Lions were available to be got. Uh, so was that marketing cost really necessary uh, is certainly debatable. So yeah, uh, it's a mess. But the qu that, So now we're a case of who is going to get paid and when are they going to get paid? Because the when is probably more relevant than the who, because... In theory, with the way this works, the new owners could essentially wait until they're in a position to pay based entirely on this entity's earnings. So anything Zalgiris or Zalgirio Group earns or Tessanet earns or anyone else, all the names I've mentioned, uh, anything they earn through other activities does not matter in this equation. Not relevant in the slightest. The London Lions, its revenues, its earnings, all that matter. And so... If that group isn't able to show, so is able to show that it doesn't have the capacity to pay off those creditors now, and there is a primacy of creditors when these things come around, then there pretty much isn't an obligation. Uh, now, it isn't quite like that, but there is no immediacy on any obligation. Now, obviously, long term, you would imagine Zabgira should want to make things right, etc., etc., and those sort of things. But when they have to and what they have to is still very much up in the air. Like this. So, essentially, this video today is to tell you that. We now know certain things, like this, that we thought was going to happen is happening. And now we know there's even more stuff we don't know. So I'm using this as a lovely opportunity, an invite, an open invite, in fact. I would love to do two, I'd love to do several interviews, but there's two I'm going to mention now. One is um, Sam Decker, if you're watching this man, hit me up. Let's, let's have a chat. We can do a piece. It can be either for my written piece or it can be, you know, over Zoom. We can do something where the videos, that'd be great. Likewise, we would love to do one with anyone from the new ownership of the London Lions. It's an open request here. Yes, I'm putting it out there. Uh, I only thought of this now. Uh, and uh, be that the new management, be that uh, I really, really love to talk to someone from, you know, Zalgiria group, given the RD ownership group. Uh, and of course, especially if Tom Ackman wants to talk to a 20-year veteran technology journalist about this, uh, we'd love to talk, anyone from Tassinet. So the offer's out there. We're putting it out there into the ether. Come talk to us. Uh, you know, I may, you know like my backdrops, I may like dressing casually, but don't worry, I can be serious when I want to be. Can I? I actually can, yeah. Like, I mean, 20 years doing this, for goodness sake. Uh, it's actually kind of weird. I get away with being this, you know, just wear my tea.
wearing my cap, having my jerseys hanging up in the backdrop. My girlfriend loves that, by the way. This is my bedroom. She thinks this is quite fun. Granted, we don't live together. Uh, but uh, I adore my partner. They're great. So, on um, that bombshell, uh, we do have one last bit of housekeeping to do, and that is, I was going to include Lonnie Walker for discussion in this video, and I realized in the afternoon that while it was a cool thing to say on Twitter, it was a stupid thing to do as a video. But don't worry, Zalgiris fans, the Lonnie Walker video is coming next week. Uh, so we will be doing that. Sorry again for no Wednesday video this week, just my work. I, I'm, I'm, I'm self-employed now. It's a bit crazy. My work kind of got out of hand, and i got to make sure I make time for people that matter in my life. You know, uh, going to see Mama on, on Sunday. That'll be great. But uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It means a lot. And uh, tell your friends that you came to this video. And, of course, uh, check out the full playlist. And, uh, of course, until next time, I will see you soon.